we've got our layout working. It's looking nice and dandy, but it's getting too big now when we're getting up to these big sizes. We don't want that to happen. What we can do to do that is a new property. We're not worrying about a new value right now. We're thinking of a new property. It works with the width, and you probably saw the name of this lesson was min and max width. So we can actually set a width and a maximum or minimum width on an element as well. So I'm going to come and put that border back on here of two pixels solid magenta, um, just so we can really see what's happening once again. And let's come and give this, we have a width of 90%, but I'm also going to give it a max width of 600 pixels. All right, let's do 620 because that was our original design. So we'll stick with the 620 that we originally had. So now if we come and take a look at this and I refresh, you're going to see it's it's working at our small screen sizes. Our container is growing. It's staying at 90%. But at one point, it's going to get locked into play. And right around here, it stops growing because it's hit its maximum width. And that means at large screen sizes, my text and line lengths aren't going to get too long. But at small screens, everything works nice and perfectly. So we've sort of got the best of both worlds going now. We can set a set value for the maximum size we want, where we can keep a percentage to let it shrink when we want it to. We can also set a min width. So if I came on here and said min width, I'm going to set it pretty big of 500 pixels. I wouldn't normally do this on a container, but just for demonstration purposes, we have our max. So it's never going to grow bigger than 620. And if I go this way, it will never get smaller than 500. So when I hit 500 pixels, you can see it stops and then I get side scrolling again, which is why I wouldn't set a min width on my container, but it does demonstrate how that property works. So for now, I'm going to take this off. I just wanted to introduce the idea of the minimum width in there, but for the max width, I will leave it on there. When we're starting to think respon responsively for the container, this is a really, really common property to set on something to give a maximum size. That size really depends on the layout and what you're building. So I'm not going to say that there's a specific max size that you should be going. You will base it on the design that you're doing. I will be going more into some best practices for total lengths and total sizes in a little bit. Um, interestingly enough, if you put your max width above your width, it's still going to work because they're two different values. Max width and width are two different ones. Uh, same with min width. You can put them in any order in your CSS and it won't have an effect. It's going to work no matter what. So play around with them. See if you can get used to it or figure it out. If it's something that you're finding a little bit confusing, don't stress about it too much. We're going to be using these a lot in the following projects that we're going to be building. It's just going to help reinforce it the more we use it. So you'll get the hang of it in no time.